Hello wonderful ladies, my name is Rupali Ranjit, I'm an audiologist and speech therapist uh, working in this field since past more than 10 years. I'm, a, I'm the founder and director of Bridges Speech Center. It's a rehabilitation center which works with the adults and kids with various difficulties like speech and language, uh, psychology, emotion, behavior, motor skills. So I'm here to talk about in today's session about how you can help your little toddler or child to be more smarter in terms of communicating. And as a new parent, what are the common mistakes which we do? So once you get to learn something, so you can apply that on your child. So before moving on, uh, what is uh, atypical or maybe uh, you can say uh, delayed, you need to understand what is typical development of a child. If the all sense organs of a child like, you know, hearing or maybe a speed of, you know, vision or intellectual skills, oral growth, everything is fine. You are stimulating uh, beautifully your child definitely the child will go through these stages so first one is uh, by the age of three months the child will start cooing so there will be goo goo ga ga these kind of sounds by the age of six months the child is babbling so you will see a kind of sounds which are like you know repetitive patterns which will come in the syllable forms which are like ba 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 goo then da 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 ta 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 and uh, by you can see by the age of nine months till to the age of 13 months you will uh, the child will acquire his first word and it keeps on happening depending on their like you know the kind of stimulation which they get so you will see by the age of 18 months they should acquire almost around 20 words by the age of two years they should acquire around 50 words and the combination of two words mama go ball go red ball like that by the age of three years they should make a simple sentences let's go out i want food give me toy so those kind of a simple sentences this over a period of maturity and their experiences you will start seeing that the child is nourished beautifully so they will try to start telling you stories uh, by the age of 3.5 to 4, you will start seeing that they are describing things, they are uh, communicating, sharing their ideas, they are talking to you, they are, there is a turn taking, you are talking to a child and the child is replying back to you. So there is like, you know, a proper conversation which is happening. So this over a period of time, the, you know, the child starts developing. So now uh, just to mention that, you know, how common it is. So as per Dr. Ahmed al Mai, which is who's the head of psychiatry department from Sheikh uh, Khalifa Medical City Hospital from Abu Dhabi, he has mentioned in 2015 that the kind of kids who are having a problem of speech language and uh, learning difficulties in UAE, it is around 7%. So you must be thinking 7% is quite low, but uh, in compared to US and UK, it is 3%. So it is common. So now after learning about that, uh, oh, before, you know, just starting a discussion, I haven't told you that I'm a speech therapist. So speech therapists work with the speech and language. So speech means the oral production of a language and language means how you're communicating your needs. So if it is a pointing, it is a form of a language. If it is a gesturing, like, you know, the child is trying to say ball, this is also a form of a language. So uh, speech is an oral form of a language. So if the child produces some word, it comes into the speech part. So if the child has a following, uh, you know, uh, kind of a symptoms, you can categorize them into a speech or language disorders. So language disorders, as usual, as I said, it's a, you know, it's a form of communication. So you will start seeing a child will have a more of a difficulty in understanding how he can form sentences or maybe a grammatically correct sentences, you will feel, uh, you will see that the child has a difficulty in following commands. He is majorly repeating back when you are asking him a question, he will again repeat back. Example, if, if you ask him, do you want water dear? The child will reply back again, do you want water dear? So it's like the child is repeating back what you are asking, what we call as an imitation or copying. They will have a very small amount of words in their vocabulary. So everything is either ball or everything is mamam. Like, you know, 
So they will keep categorizing every single category into a particular name. So um, maybe they will use some incorrect words. Difficulty you will start be, uh, finding in terms of uh, you know understanding question, following things, and as usual, the grammatical categories will be also affected. So in terms of uh, speech disorders, so speech disorders is like oral production. So it is like you know you will start if uh, the kid is uh, instead of saying table or instead of saying soap, they are saying top. So it comes into misarticulation. So in a, inappropriate or maybe a wrong articulation of a particular sound. So it comes into misarticulation. Then comes as a fluency. Fluency means stammering, stuttering, ladkhadana, or maybe barabar se totla bolna, or then you will say is like something like uh, the child is speaking very fast. It comes into the fluency part. Then comes as a resonance of voice. It means in terms of a fluency, you will see that the child has a difficulty, like, you know, as I said, like stammering, stuttering, or maybe a kind of a cluttering. You will see that the child is struggling to speak words. So instead of apple here, they will say a -a 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 apple. So that comes into the fluency part. Now coming on the resonance issues, the child is either speaking, uh, you know, very hypernasal, like, you know, the sound is very, um, what you can say, uh, it's not coming properly from the nose. So uh, that's a resonance issues. There are a lot of things which comes under, not only these things, there are a lot of things which comes under speech and language. So maybe some other day we will, you know, go in detail about that. So now moving on to how you can help uh, your little child. So there are some of the tips which uh, you need to apply, which can make wonders on with your little ones. So like example, spending more quality time. So spending quality time does not mean that you are just simply taking your phone, the child is sitting next to you and he's saying mama, mama or papa, papa and you're just ah yes, 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 not like that kind of a communication. Quality time means where you're spending a time with your child, where the mobile is far away. It's not only the child who's getting fascinated with the mobile, it is us as an adult as well. So whenever you come back from office or something, at least spent around one hour of a quality time with your child so now reducing exposure to technological devices so as far as possible make sure this TV mobile has to be little away these are good but to a limited amount of time which you give if you continue to expose your child for three hours four hours two hours it is not good so um, these devices have uh, you know adverse effects on a child's developing like example uh, uh, this unpredictability which um, uh, in terms of messages which we get from a mobile it causes us to hook onto that mobile so it causes a secretion of chemicals called dopamine uh, so this uh, dopamine what dopamine does is that it causes you to uh, you know get fascinated more and more it's a happy hormone the same hormones get secreted when you are uh, consuming alcohol or smoking cigarettes. So you are indirectly causing your child, uh, you know, uh, putting into some addiction which is not required for a such young brain. So next is another hormone which gets reduced is a melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone which is very essential for your body to sleep peacefully. These LED devices causes depletion of this hormone. So as far as possible, keep little mobile away especially in the initial years maybe you know from zero to five now taking child to different places you need to make sure you know take them to places which where they can explore themselves like you know like what is happening around explain the surrounding okay uh, like you know not, not to take them to some fancy you know light and musical areas where there is like you no know, you press something you get lots of tickets and all Rather take them to beach, park, let them learn, let them walk with the bare feet and, you know, understand how to get it back, like, you know, even after falling. Now, proper stimulation and right modeling is very much important. Like example, if you are talking to your child like a baby, like uh, uh, mama ko uh, baby apu chahiye, babu ko apu chahiye. Abhi, babu is going to learn only apu he is not going to understand that apu is apple so over a period of time 
once you understand that you know the child uh, like you know has developed that word you need to make sure that over a period of maturity you also match has to mature your language or la mature the way you talk to your child otherwise he will continue to speak in inappropriate way of uh, producing sounds so you have to give a right mod now moving on to uh, start some kind of a task which will help you to share your thought and ideas take some ideas from your child like example you are cooking a simple recipe which are non heat like example uh, yogurt ice cream so uh, i have few females on my board so let's just let me know what non heat uh, you know recipes you can try with your child where you can communicate with her or him like example salads or maybe sandwiches so these kind of recipes you can try and help your child you know uh, uh, to share an ideas like example uh, you're making lemonade so like you're cutting the lemon let's cut the lemon let's squeeze it can you taste the lemon how is it it's tangy let's add sugar sugar how is the sugar can you taste that oh it's so sweet so you are speaking lot of things the child is learning through you so that kind of communicative exchange should be there or maybe you are yes yes i can i'm getting few responses so next comes is uh, cakes and cookies provided uh, the oven part you can do it and you can ask the child to mix it with you you can ask them to taste it i'm really sorry there are some noises which are going on externally hope i am audible to you now moving on to like you know uh, visual and auditory memory some of the tasks which you can conduct with your child using uh, some toys which are readily available at home like example um, it can be simple tasks like a potato racing keep some toys away from the child or maybe some of your common household items away from the child and tell the child i want spoon and cup run and get it for me so you will get to know how many number of items the child can retain in his you know and sustain that information for long, longer so not only that you can make it little more complex your instructions by saying that don't bring me cup bring me spoon and a bowl so you are over a period of time you know making your language more complex so that the child has to pay attention to your instructions more carefully now moving on to look for overall growth rather than focusing on only one part of development like you know speech and language make them physically active let them you know let them go to those uh, sand walk on the grass make them understand we have lot of sensors on our hands and feet which get stimulated when we are uh, walking bare feet or using our bare hands so make sure that you know take off the shoes and let the child play now stop dependence and blaming like you know oh i am all the way time outside uh, i am not able to focus on your on my child so make sure that as a parent it is a responsibility of both father and mother so uh, we are not expecting that you know so many people like you know you have to spend number of hours but at least one hour each see over a period of time the child is see once you now also when we are now adults we are not going to remember what we don't remember what we were having when we were kids what kind of toys we were having but we still remember those memories which we have built with our child so these initial 1 to 5 years are very crucial for a child to have emotional bonding with you to understand how important my mother and father was when i was a baby this we have done we have made a castle we have run through uh, ran through lot of things we then broke this then lot of other things we have done so these kind of things are going to the child is going to remember forever so make sure as far as possible build those memories with your child now uh, moving on to early intervention like uh, what happens is that uh, we have uh, some of our near and dear ones who keep telling that you know thoda bachcha late bolta hai like you know ho jata hai are tum bhi to late the so you need to understand one thing when uh, when it was your stage you are now 25 years old it was a stage 25 years before now all of you must i don't know how how many of you will agree with me do you feel that your child is uh, has too much of study and they are very very smart just let me know these kids who are gen, like you know now 
are in alpha generations and we are from millennials. So their brain, their kind of working is quite different than us. They're more smarter than us. So the kind of expectations which you keep has to be to uh, the age group which they are following, not to what you were about and there is no genetic connection between delayed speech if the child an adult or maybe your father mother has so the child also has to be delayed now uh, now coming on to some of the things i would like to explain is like you know the initial five years are quite crucial so uh, in which the 95 percent of her brain will form and the rest of five percent will continue to grow till age of 15. So this growth will be very small, like you no know, very you know you know teeny tiny growth will keep continue to happen with the no neurons. But these initial five years are quite crucial. So utilize that time to maximum so that the child can grasp more and more things. Now moving on to some of the things which we see like you know fluency issues, like you know stuttering is there, or maybe the child is not articulating properly. These initial stages, what you will see is that, you know, uh, when they are growing or maybe developing that problem, it can be very in a minimal form. But over a period of time, based on their experiences and uh, difficulty level, they will start collecting those experiences, bad experiences or negative experiences more and more. And it is going to impact their psychology and understanding their emotions. So whenever you see a problem which is happening at the teeny tiny time or base, that time you consult somebody, take an opinion regarding it. Nobody is going to force you for do some kind of intervention. If you don't feel it is right, it is fine. But at least take somebody's you know, opinion regarding it. The right person, not uh, who has not seen cases more. Not like that. But Or maybe a kind of person who knows about this area, how to handle. Now, uh, some of the cases like, uh, example, dyslexia or... Uh, stuttering so what happens is that we have number of different areas within our brain which helps you to emotionally be stronger and you know your personality or your self respects it takes care of all of these things like you know how uh, we understand the surrounding so uh, in um, just to explain you like you know in the hippocampal area hippocampus area there is a small tiny structure called amygdala so it is quite, quite you know, this uh, structure is uh, which helps you, like you know, which uh, is very tiny, but uh, it starts collecting an information from the surrounding. It can be positive and negative based on that. The size of this tiny structure starts becoming bigger and bigger. Example, uh, if you say can't you do it you don't understand this how many times i need to explain you you are impossible to teach even if you're not verbally speaking you are like you know you're just showing some kind of facial expressions or maybe your body language expresses it the child starts collecting that information and that amygdala starts taking over the brain areas and he starts telling the brain oh you are impossible to teach you can't do it it's not possible for you and the child starts developing that as their personality or they feel that yes i can't do it so that should not happen so you be mindful about how you use what kind of words you use how you deal with your child when he has an issue this complexity will keep on increasing over a period of time so when it is at the initial stage when you feel that it is at uh, you know something which is manageable just help your child that time now moving on to, um, I have uh, very few queries. So by two years, it should be, the child should be able to, uh, uh, able to join two words together. And uh, there should be 50 words vocabulary should be there. So now, uh, Ms. Naushin has mentioned that uh, my younger one cannot speak that well while the elder one is, oh, look, uh, why so? See, you, each child is different. It can be, a, you know, you can't compare, as usual, your fingers. You can't compare one finger with the other. So the child, your elder one, uh, can be very different in terms of his likings and dislikings. You can't expect the same likings and dislikings dislikings should be there for your younger one. The same way for you. Like example, you like something, it cannot be, you know, standardized for everyone. Like everyone should like the same thing because you like it. So maybe the elder one has uh, some skills 
which uh, which the younger one does not have the younger one has some skills which the elder one doesn't have so the each child will be different it's not that the common standard pattern it has to be followed but there is a kind of a criteria which is normally used for a typical development so if anybody has a question this uh, what you can do it is that you can uh, just go through the rebroadcast and just check whether you know it is sufficient enough to solve your queries or what you can do it is like just keep uh, going through the comment i will go through the re uh, you know the broadcast again and i'll reply back to your all your comments so um, and so Ms. Shilpa is mentioning, my 14-month-old daughter cannot mingle with the other kids and very shy of people. How to change this? See, um, the kid, if he's very young, it is it is lot of anxieties which the kid, kid, like, you know, when growing age, they develop. So they have little difficulty to mingle up. So slowly, slowly, you have to gradually take them out and, you know, slowly, slowly expose them to different people. Don't try to, you know, just push her for something which is new for her. So over a period of time with her experience, she will start getting more, you know, social. So regarding uh, this um, session, it's now over. I'm really glad that uh, uh, I'll be, I was able to do, I was able to share this knowledge with uh, IWD. Thank you, Ms. Reema, for giving me this wonderful opportunity and helping me out with this live video. And... Uh, Thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Prasanna. So, uh, uh, thank you for uh, being such a patient listener. So, if you have any queries, please mention it in the comment box. I will go through the e-broadcast, take note the broadcast, and I will reply you back on your comment. Maybe not now, but later, but definitely I'll do that. And if you know that somebody in your family really needs to listen to this, please come and put there, you know, tag them in the comment box. If you want to meet me or contact uh, Bridges Speed Center, I'll just give you the contact details. The email address is contact at the rate bridgespeedcenter.ae and the contact number is 043-58-115-0505-226054. The other number is 0505-226054. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, being such a wonderful group. Bye.